Hey guys, Red Fox here, and welcome to my run through Dark Souls as Dragon Slayer Ornstein. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of people pitting the boss Ornstein against other bosses, and people playing as Ornstein in other Soulsborne games, and no, for all of you guys that are watching my Elden Ring videos, I haven't watched this video, I only saw it and would like to watch it someday. But so far as I could tell, nobody's actually made a video beating Dark Souls as Ornstein. Is this because everyone does this? Probably. Is it because it's easy? Hell no. Since I love doing cosplay and roleplaying runs on games, I adore Dark Souls, and you guys voted that I start with the Captain of the Knights of Gwyn, Ornstein, I'm excited to answer the question, can you beat Dark Souls as Ornstein? So the rules of this run are simple. I can only use the Dragon Slayer Spear as a weapon. I can only cast the Lightning and Great Lightning Spear Miracles. I can only equip Ornstein's armor and have to keep it equipped as much as possible. And, barring two exceptions I made, I must always have the Leo Ring equipped. This will make certain bosses difficult, like Smo and Ornstein, with Ornstein of course resisting his primary damage type, Lightning Damage, which also happens to be my primary damage type by virtue of being him, and like Gwyn, who all but halves Lightning Damage since his Lightning Bolts have literally transcended electricity and turned into sunlight, as well as making some easy methods of defeating bosses like Poise Tanking the Four Kings much harder, but Ornstein is just too cool and badass not to do a run for, and, being that he's in every Dark Souls game, you can probably expect to see similar runs in the future. I also have outlined some optional objectives for the run as well. First, I've got to help anyone I come across. I won't do every NPC quest to completion, but I've got to put forth an honest effort to aid the people of Lordran as the benevolent captain of the elite knights of Lord Gwyn. Next, being that Ornstein is the supposed leader of the Knights of Gwyn and is a particularly effective duo with Smo in the Cathedral of An Orlando, I must summon Solaire at least once for every possible boss fight. Since Solaire is a warrior of sunlight, a fellow Knight of the Nameless King, Ornstein's direct superior and closest ally, Ornstein would likely consider him an ignoble warrior and a trustworthy ally, so I must summon him for every boss that I can with one notable exception for reasons tied to the next optional objective. For this run, I can only join Gwyn-aligned covenants. This limits me to only four possible covenants, Warrior of Sunlight, Princess Guard, Way of White, and Blade of the Dark Moon. Since Blade of the Dark Moon are Gwendolyn's personal warriors and Way of White is more intended for the human-slash-undead clergy of Gwyn, that further limits me to Warrior of Sunlight and Princess Guard. The exception for summoning Solaire is because I can't join the Chaos Servant Covenant to save him in Isolith, meaning I won't be able to summon our Sunny Boy for the final boss fight against the Lord of Sunlight. Speaking of the Chaos Servant faction, that leads me to my next optional objective. I must kill all Dragon, Demon, and Abyss enemies in the game. I've limited this to one-time kill enemies only, since I don't want to have to kill those drakes in Drake Valley every time I use a bonfire, but all enemies and bosses that fit those categories, optional or not, must be slain. Since Ornstein is quite literally the Dragon Slayer, using the Dragon Slayer Spear and Lightning Miracles, the weakness of dragons, I of course have to kill all dragon enemies such as the Hellkite Dragon, the Zombie Dragon in Drake Valley, and of course Crossbreed Priscilla, the one exception, lot of exceptions I know, being the everlasting dragon in Ash Lake since it's immortal, which is kind of ironic since I imagine its immortality comes from its scales, those same scales being the ones Ornstein has pierced through hundreds of times with his spear and lightning. Anyway, the reason I also include demon enemies and abyss enemies is because, while Gwyn and his armies won the first Great War of the Age of Fire against the dragons, the campaign against the demons after the Bed of Chaos incident was widely considered to be a catastrophic failure, and the third and final battle Gwyn's forces have been fighting is against the abyss. So this is essentially a catch-all of Gwyn's enemies. That also leads to the next optional objective, I must avoid killing as many Gwyn-aligned creatures as possible. Some bosses, like the Guardian of An Orlando, the Iron Golem, the Princess's guards, Smo and Ornstein, and Gwyn's former confidant Seath are unavoidable in a normal playthrough, but optional enemies like Hidden Black Knights and Gwendolyn must not be killed. Furthermore, within the limits of reason, I must avoid killing Gwyn-aligned enemies that attack me as well. I can run past some of the Silver Knights in An Orlando, but if a subordinate or ally attacked him for seemingly no reason and got in the way of his fulfilling the wishes of Lord Gwyn to continue the Age of Fire, even the honorable and heroic Ornstein would have no recourse but to defend himself. Alright, that's it for the optional objectives. The run ends when I defeat Lord Gwyn and rekindle the First Flame to continue the Age of Fire. Let's begin. 
So of course this run will be on New Game Plus, since it's impossible to play through the first half of the game with Ornstein's equipment, but we already have everything we'll need for the run, and our SL120 build is complete, so we won't be using a single soul to level up for the entire run. Shout out to Crozen for the build. It was great to play, felt accurate to the character, and gives me almost the exact same health value as Ornstein as well. So cheers, man! So with the SL120 build and all the powers of the legendary Dragon Slayer Ornstein, it should come as no surprise that I'm able to swiftly and easily get my first of many revenge kills against the demons by electrifying the Asylum Demon to a crisp with my Dragon Felling Great Lightning Spear Miracle. Blood for blood, demons. One wrong set right. After receiving both the key to escape this wretched place and the start of my mission from the Honorable Sir Oscar of Astora as his final parting act, I'm brought back to my homeland, the land of the gods and ancient lords, Lordren, via bird, and I'm dropped off at Firelink Shrine. I've already kindled the Firelink bonfire to the max and have plus two Estus from my first minimalistic run, so that'll definitely make the early game much easier. I speak to the crestfallen warrior and he tells me about the Bells of Awakening, so I set out on my journey to fulfill the wishes of Lord Gwyn and rekindle the First Flame, quickly coming across the first of the last of my mortal enemies, the Hellkite Drake. Soon, it'll be time to finish what I started. I make sure to buy the residential key from the Undead Merchant so that I can later save the astute scholar of Vinheim, Griggs, who has locked himself in some random house by accident, and then I continue onward, being sure to avoid the Black Knight in this area, to the second of my demonic foes, the Taurus Demon. I take out the crossbows at the top of the tower, and then just repeatedly pepper the demon with Great Lightning Spears for the win, a tactic that will largely no longer be viable moving forward. I meet up with my first true ally in this world, Solaire, and we have a nice chat before I decide to take on my first dragon enemy, the Hellkite Drake. It's a shame that I can't take him out in a lore-accurate fashion, i.e. hurling lightning spears at him from afar and finishing him off with my spear, but thanks to Terramantis and his guide to beating the Hellkite Drake with melee, after a long and tedious battle consisting of me hiding on the stairs, waiting for the drake to land, hitting its head once or twice, and repeating that for a little over 40 minutes, I felled the foul beast. Guess he forgot that I'm the guy that's chiefly responsible for basically wiping out his entire race. I take a brief moment to pray at the shrine of my current covenant, the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant, and after again leaving this area's Black Knight to his peace, and freeing the unduly trapped Sir Lotric of Karim, favorite of the goddess Velka, I must defeat the Bell Gargoyles to ring the first Bell of Awakening. Since these gargoyles are technically constructs created and used by Anne Orlando, this will be the first unfortunate instance of forced friendly fire for this run, but I'm sure it's just Lord Gwyn testing my strength for the journey ahead, and my faith in the Lord of Sunlight. Luckily, I've got an ally to help me with this battle. This fight would have been easy enough with just me, but with two Warriors of Sunlight taking to the battlefield, the gargoyles were entirely outclassed and outmatched. Solaire attacked as my Smo, fighting up close and taking aggro as I threw lightning spears and stabbed at them with my spear from range until we defeated them, taking their tail, shield, and helm as trophies for the trophy room in An Orlando. After praising Lord Gwyn, I rang the first bell and set out for the next. While I'm in the area, I grab the crest of Artorias from the smith, Andre of Astora, another honorable man from the country, and I slay the Titanite demon looming in the area, scratching another name off of my list and getting more materials to upgrade my spear since I couldn't be bothered to get it to plus 5 in my first run. After getting the Dragon Slayer spear to plus 3, I spoke with the righteous, friendly, and hardy knight of Katarina Sigmire, and heard of his plight in not being able to progress his quest into Sen's funky funhouse, I made my way through the Undead Burg as easily as I ever have. I speak to all the new inhabitants of Firelink Shrine after opening the shortcut and am amply compensated for my aid by the respectable Sir Lotric. And I meet the final of the early game demon boss trio, the Capra Demon, on the field of battle. This time, he was the one to call back up in the form of his ravenous hounds, but being SL120 and having a boss weapon and armor makes dispatching them a simple matter. I retreat to the top of the Ark to heal, and rain the lightning of the first Knight of the Nameless King down onto this disgusting demon, ending the life of another pest of the demon infestation. Now, with access to the Depths and another dragon to slay, I save the virtuous Laurentius of the Great Swamp, clear the Channeler atop the boss room wall, and face off against this revolting descendant of monsters and a mockery of the mighty beasts Ornstein once did battle against, the Gaping Dragon. To call it a dragon would be shameful to Ornstein's legacy, but with my venerable ally Solaire by my side, he once again takes aggro while I attack with my long-ranged miracles and spears. Each of my attacks does roughly 5% of the gaping dragon's health and damage, 
and a good thing about the Ornstein run is that even on NG+, your attacks will do decent damage since most bosses are either weak to or don't resist lightning damage. So Solaire is able to cut off its tail similarly to how he cut off the gargoyle's tail, and I'm able to drop it to less than a quarter of its health before Solaire unfortunately succumbs to the repulsive creature. Not willing to let his sacrifice be in vain, I drive my spear straight through the boss's face and slay this dragon. I then travel down through Blight Town to the domain of Quelag, a daughter of the Witch of Izalith and an unfortunate target for Ornstein. Being that Gwyn and the Witch were once allies, but due to a well-intended mistake of the Witch, her and her ilk became demons. I considered summoning Maneater Mildred for this fight since Ornstein has teamed up with cannibals in the past, but after deciding that that was more out of necessity and sense of duty rather than preference, I decided to go it alone. Underestimating her, I actually died in this fight around five times. But when I actually took the fight, and more specifically the threat of her explosion attack, more seriously, I was able to destroy the evil corrupted Chaos Witch with a combination of my faith-fueled miracles, my skillful spear play, and my deft and agile maneuvering. Praise the sun. Now that I've proven myself by ringing both bells of awakening, I must prove myself one final time by forging my way through Sen's fortress and overcoming the Iron Golem to regain entry to the City of the Gods and Orlando. Before I left though, I made sure to finish off the rest of the wicked chaos scum here by mercy killing the last of the Daughters of Izalith. Before setting off for Sen's, I stop at Firelink to catch up with its new dwellers, with Sir Lotric having turned out to be an immoral, sinful slayer of firekeepers and having disappeared, the crestfallen warrior being impressed by my efforts but off put by the breath of our new primordial serpent ally, Laurentius having settled nicely, Kingseeker Fremt believing me to be able to succeed Lord Gwyn and offering to act as my guide and sending me to Anarlando to acquire the Lord Vessel, Petrus finding fellow Way of White members to travel with, and Griggs being Griggs. Also, I have one bit of backtracking to do before I go to Anarlando. I've got to go back to the Undead Asylum to take out the stray demon I saw lurking around back at the beginning of the game. This fight was actually pretty tough, tougher than I expected, which cost me about 500,000 souls and 11 humanity, but after remembering how to deal with the magic blasts and taking the demon out with miracles and spear stabs from behind, I annihilated the disgusting, dirty demon. Unfortunately, right after, I have to slay one of my own as a Black Knight stands between me and my original cell, where the peculiar doll needed to enter the Painted World of Ariamis is, and I need to get to the Painted World to destroy the fetid abomination crossbreed Priscilla. Getting through Sins is no more difficult than normal, and I make sure to help both the honest and moral Sigmire, as well as the right-minded and morally correct Big Hat Logan, before taking on the Iron Golem. As always, the fight wasn't particularly difficult, he's slow and bulky enough that staying just out of his reach, hitting him with a lightning spear, rolling between his legs to avoid an attack, and piercing his steel skin is all I had to do to win, though it is worth noting that he's the first boss so far to eat through most of my lightning spear miracles and almost break through my dragon slayer spear. With that, the forces that be, likely Dark Sun Gwendolyn, have deemed me worthy of passage into the sacred city of Anorlando. And here's where the fun ends for a while, because next is Smo and the Impostor. After making it past the first Guardian Gargoyle, only slaying the painting guardians necessary to proceed past the scaffolding, praising Lord Gwyn, and defeating the second Guardian Gargoyle, it was time for me to plunge into Ariamis head first. Unlike the residents of Anorlando, the enemies here are free real estate and definitely not as difficult as I remember. So after throwing everything I had at this filthy undead dragon from just beyond its range and ending its miserable existence, it was time to eradicate this horrid creature, both a half-dragon and wielding the accursed, hateful, and all-consuming life on Scythe, the crossbreed Priscilla, sent to the nasty world of Ariamis to wither away as far from the gods as possible. Being that she's half-dragon, my Dragon Slayer spear does pretty good damage, and aside from the fact that it's a bit more difficult to tag her with a pinpoint precision stabbing weapon than it would be with a wide sweeping slashing weapon, I'm able to track her easy enough from her footprints and defeat her before she can activate invisibility a second time. All in all, an extremely easy fight, way easier than I was expecting since this is my first time ever actually fighting her. After erasing the vicious and vile dragon spawn from this putrid rotten world, I plunge down from the plank and return to Anorlando to remove the imposter from his post and to relieve Smo of his duties. I meet up with my ethical and principled companion on this journey, kill as few Silver Knights as possible as I move through the cathedral, 
destroy this wicked demon residing so closely to the princess, slay the based Lautrec to avenge and restore the Firekeeper of Firelink Shrine, summon the full of integrity Warrior of Sunlight to aid me in defeating the Poser and the Reject, and I head into what was the hardest boss fight of this run. So the plan here was to defeat Ornstein first for two reasons. One, in this RP, this Ornstein is an imposter, so the real Ornstein, me, would want to get rid of him first. Doubly so, as a Phase 2 mirror match would be kind of boring and weird to me, and having Ornstein face off against his disdained companion of circumstance, who he just witnessed finishing off who he believed to be the real Ornstein without a second thought for more power, seems more thematic to me. And two, Ornstein resists my lightning miracles and has both the range and speed to make using them difficult, whereas Smo is slow and doesn't resist lightning nearly as much, if at all, making him a prime target for range spam. Looking back on my first attempt, if I had played this a little smarter, I might have actually been able to first try this fight and not have to suffer through what I did, seeing as Solaire aggroed Smo so that I could have a 1v1 against the Imposter, but when Solaire and Ornstein ended up aggroing each other, Solaire was summarily executed, and I did about as well as you'd expect for my first time fighting the duo in like half a year. What followed was an hour and a half and 19 attempts of the boss fight by myself, since I found the hassle of getting Solaire to be too much, and I already fulfilled the summon Solaire at least once requirement for the optional objective. But slowly and surely, I was shaking off the rust and getting the timing and spatial awareness and distancing skills back to be able to beat them. On my successful attempt, while I started off in a less than ideal situation, I was patient with my timing, made sure to use the pillars to my advantage to either block Smo or block Ornstein when I was trying to heal, made sure to almost always keep both of them in front of me and stay aware of my surroundings, like corners and pillars, so as not to get caught. I was mindful of Ornstein's attack patterns and always tried to counter from his side or behind since his effective attack range is basically just a straight line. I was careful to always keep away from or dance around Smo, and though there were definitely still some close calls, and it probably wasn't the best played ONS fight ever, it was serviceable. After being so nervous and anxious while playing that my legs started shaking like a cartoon characters, I got Ornstein to run after me with Smo lagging just far enough behind that I decided to go for broke and finish Ornstein off just as Smo connected with a nearly sanity ending hit. Smo finishes off the poser, and, after surviving with a shred of health, I use a humanity to heal to full, and throw every lightning miracle I've got at this muscular mountain of a man. Things get dicey here and there, but after using all of my miracles, he'd been whittled down to less than half health. So I move up and finish him with my Dragon Slayer Spear, which I won't say is effortless, but I will say was much easier for me than Phase 1. I give my old companion a bow of respect despite his person, praise the sun, and take my elevator up to the princess. Lady Guinevere gives me the Lord Vessel, and now that I can fast travel, I've got a couple of things to do for cleanup before I continue. First, I meet back up with Solaire under the warmth of the sun as we discuss the trials of our chosen path, and I offer up Lord Gwyn's soul to the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant, as well as all the Sunlight Medals I currently have. I wasn't quite sure of what to do with Gwyn's soul at first, so I consulted an Ornstein AI, and in response to me asking if you found yourself in possession of his soul after having defeated his hollow remains in order to carry on his wishes to continue the Age of Fire, would you give the Warriors of Sunlight his soul? He said, yes. If it is Lord Gwyn's will, I would give his soul to the Warriors of Sunlight. It is my duty to serve Lord Gwyn and to carry out his wishes to the best of my ability. Lord Gwyn was selfless and honorable. He fought the dragons to protect humanity, and he sought to extend the Age of Fire to preserve civilization and avoid the dark. I believe that his desire to extend the Age of Fire was in the best interests of humanity, and I would be honoring that by giving his soul to the Sunlight Warriors. If Lord Gwyn had any other wishes, he would have made them known to me. And that sounded good to me. Only problem I can maybe think of is that this covenant is technically to the Nameless King, and what with his being exiled and stripped from the annals of history, maybe Gwyn wouldn't want him to have his soul. Regardless, I did that as a final farewell to the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant, because much like in the lore of Dark Souls, Ornstein is going to be leaving that covenant to become a member of the Princess Guard Covenant. After that, I restore the Fair Maiden Anastasia of Astora and regain access to the Firelink Bonfire, I make Frampt incredibly happy with the news of my success, and he explains that I now must defeat the Four Lords and feed their souls to the Lord Vessel to succeed Lord Gwyn, 
and I destroyed the zombie dragon in Drake Valley, something I wanted to get done before I got caught up in the quests for the Lords and forgot about it. So for this run, I decided to take on the Lords in the order of their being listed by Frant. So Nido, Isolith, Four Kings, and then Seath. I head down to the Catacombs and take on Pinwheel, but I was admittedly super sloppy with the fight and just tried to brute force my way through the fight, and while I of course defeated Pinwheel, this guy actually killed me. Positively mortifying. Worse yet, I die in the run to his boss room and lose 14 soft humanity, which was really lame. I eventually make it to the Tomb of Giants, get the bonfire, get tricked by Patches, defeat Nico and Vincent of Thorolin for Rhea, benevolently forgive Patches, and challenge my first lord, first of the dead, Gravelord Nito. My first couple of attempts I failed badly, treating Nito like a normal boss and forgetting that the skeletons are the real main concern, and that most of Nito's attacks are really only good for getting rid of his own allies rather than actually hitting me. The winning strategy was either to get really close and barely bother to evade his attacks since they miss anyway and hit his allies, or when he does the miasma attack, just run away, get behind something, and then pepper him with lightning spears until either he or the skeletons close the distance. It did take half of the Estus I had of the 20 I came in with, but all it really took was just me turning on my brain after that pinwheel fight. Next, on to Isolith, starting with the Ceaseless Discharge. Being an unfortunate victim of the Witch of Isolith's well-meant accident, he's unfortunately demon spawn, and therefore must be subject to execution via being stabbed off of a cliff. With the lava gone, we can now proceed to the Fire Sage Demon, my demon arch rival for this run, as despite him normally being a throwaway boss with the same moveset as two other bosses, for some reason in this run I had a difficult time getting behind him and stabbing him consistently without getting magic bombed. With creatures like these in their army, I'm starting to get why Gwyn and his people lost against them. After I figured out my poor timing and rolls, the fight became significantly easier, and I took the bloated demon out to move on to the last demon spawn I'd be fighting in this run, the Centipede Demon. As it makes its descent into the lava-filled boss room, Solaire and I team up one final time to get revenge against the last of the demon's scourge. I hurl lightning spears at it and get to its underbelly and thrust my spear into it as much and as often as possible, and Solaire does what he's done in pretty much every other fight, grab aggro and lob off the tail. He even killed the chopped off tail himself as I finished off the demon. With one final praise the sun, I depart from my good man and challenge the next lord, the Witch of Isolith turned the bed of chaos, Mother of Demons. I figured out that the best way to do this fight is to take out the right witch, save quit, run along the wall, hop this gap and take out the left witch, save quit again, and then take out the bed herself. But I got cold feet and messed up on the middle part, so while I didn't get the bed on the first try, I got her in two attempts. Praise the sun. Next was the lord I feared the most, the Four Kings of New Londo. Before that, I decided to complete the dragon slaying list by finishing off the last two one-time kill dragons in Dark Souls, the Hydras, who I did have to confirm were dragons, and they in fact are. On my way down to Darkroot Basin, I dispatched the mighty Havel the Rock, who at first I was trying to avoid since he was in Gwyn's army, but if I remember and understand correctly, he's either a traitor or a deserter that was locked in this tower for his crimes, so I think I'm okay here. The first Hydra was a mixed bag since he was too far away to get with lightning spears, but after the arduous task of taking out all of its heads, it was onto the much easier Ash Lake Hydra who, while being significantly stronger, was a cakewalk with my lightning spears. It took about a minute to take it out, and afterwards I put my best foot forward to kill the stone dragon here, but settled with severing its tail as a trophy. Setting out for the four kings, in order to delve into the abyss and destroy them, I had to defeat an old friend. This fight's generally only as difficult as you make it, so either hurling lightning spears from just outside Sif's range while she attacked, or getting right under her and piercing her hide with the Dragon Slayer spear made short work of this fight, and though it was cool how she'd jump away from my spear or out of the way of my lightning, I unfortunately had to see her injured for a bit. I gave my other old friend a nod of respect, and with his power by my side, I dove into the darkness. So my biggest fear for this fight was that even though the kings are weak to lightning, my damage output wouldn't be enough and I'd get swarmed, doubly so since I didn't have the range to miracle spam, nor did I have the roll speed to escape their blast attack. Things looked dour when my first attempt ended with them at 75% health, 
But then I remembered that this weapon has a special moveset for being two-handed, and that Ornstein himself sometimes two-hands the weapon, so I gave that a shot, and my progress vastly improved. Unfortunately, on my second attempt, with the kings at 20% health left, I tried to get fancy and use heavy attacks, which slowed down my attack speed too much, resulting in my getting ganked and blasted to death. After just two-handing and doing what I did that second time without being a moron, I gained the bequeathed Lord Soul and escaped the Abyss. Ironic that pride was the Lion's folly. With nobody left but the final dragon in the game and Lord Gwyn's former confidant, I save Big Hat Logan one last time, and then take on the wonderful scaleless beast. My first attempt went to the dogs, or I guess the clams, because one of these jerks followed me into the boss room and got me killed, but my second attempt had the benefit of the fog wall and went much better. The fight was as simple as staying far back, throwing what essentially amounted to a spear made of deadly anti-seeth juice at him, and then running up close while he crystal breathed where I was and stabbing him with a spear enchanted with anti-seeth juice designed specifically to genocide seeth's race, so suffice it to say that the fight went well and didn't last long. With one final send off to the man who won us the Lord's War, I offered the Lord's Souls to the Lord Vessel and gained access to the Kiln of the First Flame, where I aimed to face down my Lord and put him down once and for all that I might fulfill his wish for me. For my first couple of attempts, I tried to play the fight straight, but the reason I've been fearing this fight is because Gwyn's too fast and aggressive to use miracles on, and he resists lightning damage so well, he halves it! Meaning he halves all damage I deal with one of two of my primary damage types. In a straight no parry fight, I don't think I ever even dropped him below 10% health. After about 20 minutes of trying that, I then attempted what the youths refer to as Cheese Strats, where I perch up in a place in the boss arena that Gwyn can't get to and hurl lightning spears at him. Problem with that idea was that A, even after throwing all my miracles at him, he was still only down to like 75% health, B, I was stuck in that spot and couldn't hit him with my spear, and C, he still had some attacks that could hit me and I would eventually die anyway. He was supposed to get stuck up there with me eventually and I'd be able to roll out and beat him, but after realizing that that was a pipe dream since the only time he actually got stuck up there with me was once when he killed me, and it would also be a pretty lame way to end the Ornstein run, I decided to just do it as intended by Lord Gwyn and Miyazaki, Estus Perry Loop. It still took a couple of hours to get the timing down and get a good run where he chiefly went for slow, easily parryable attacks, some attempts in that time span including amazing comebacks that ultimately became incredibly bitter defeats, but after an hour and over 25 attempts, I defeated my lord, praised his son, prayed for his peace, and bowed in respect of his power even as a shell of his former self. Truly a man worth serving. With that, I sacrificed myself and the power I accrued on my journey to kindle the first flame and continue the Age of Fire, securing Lord Gwyn's legacy for time immemorial. Praise the sun. So that's it everyone. You can, in fact, beat Dark Souls as Ornstein, even on NG+. What about our optional objectives? Well, I personally think I did a decent enough job helping anyone I came across. If I saw someone in need or saw an injustice, I aided and righted those wrongs where and when I could, so I'd say that's a pass. I summoned Solaire for every possible fight at least once, so while I regrettably couldn't save him in the end, I succeeded this one too. I also only joined the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant and the Princess Guard Covenant, so that's another check, but this next one gets tricky. While I did successfully kill all killable single-kill-only dragons in the game, to my knowledge, I did not kill the Titanite Demon in Isolith, and I literally ran past pretty much everything in New Londo, so I know I failed the optional objective to kill all Abyss enemies. I guess that's canon when you think about it, since Gwyn, and by extension Ornstein, beat the dragons, but lost the war with the demons, and are actively and inevitably losing to the Abyss, to the point that even the Abyss Specialist, Abyss Walker Artorius lost to Manus. Finally, did I avoid killing as many Gwyn-aligned creatures as possible? Well, for that one, I'll let you guys decide. I killed my fair share of Gwyn-aligned enemies, but I at least tried to avoid killing any allies I didn't have to, so let me know if I passed or failed in the comments. All said and done, the Dragon Slayer Spear was a fun and fantastic weapon that I enjoyed using because of its long range, lightning damage, and special lightning attack. 
The Dragon Slayer armor set is easily one of my favorites in Dark Souls aesthetically, is generally a great set of armor, and got me used to mid-rolling again. The Leo Ring was as amazing as always, and made it so that, if I got the timing right on some of my attacks, I was dealing over double my normal damage, and the build was awesome. I really enjoyed having both this powerful cross spear to use, as well as having the Lightning Spear Miracles to use at farther range. I don't think I've ever done a Miracle build, so it was nice to finally get to use the Miracles that were used to beat the everlasting dragons in the lore, and the fact that the Dragon Slayer Spear scales with both Dex and Faith made it perfect for this build. As to be expected, as it was, of course, built around Ornstein, who uses Dex and Faith, uses this weapon himself, and who this build was tailor-made for. Alright, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the run. Goodbye then, do be safe.